see a lot of familiar faces. It's also going to see some new faces as well. We're excited to have Shane Granger here today. Shane is a tourism certified tourism ambassador for the Armstrong Foundation in Edmond. And Shane became a certified tourism ambassador in 2013. And in 2015, he was awarded Certified Ambassador of the Year, Gold Star. So that's really exciting. He's also a member of the Public Relations Society of America. And today, Shane is going to help us tap into ways that we can use the CTA program for our digital marketing efforts. So big shout out to Clarity Coffee and Brown's Bakery. Thank you for the pick me up this morning. And we're really excited to have Shane. So please join me in welcoming him. Well, thanks very much. It's great to be here. Thank you all for coming. I'm really excited to share with you uh, what I have learned about the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program here in Oklahoma City. We're going to talk today about tourism. We're going to talk about how awesome the tourism industry is in Oklahoma. And I want to talk to you about the CTA program, tell you what it's about, uh, what it's intended to do, and then uh, to try to make it relevant for everyone here. Uh, we're all marketers, we're all, a lot of us are in digital marketing. We're going to talk about how you can leverage the power of tourism in your marketing. And uh, so these will be some uh, ideas and best practices that we've learned over the last uh, few years that we've been involved with the program. Uh, as uh, as uh, you probably already know, I'm with the Armstrong International Cultural Foundation, and we uh, up in Edmond, and we uh, operate the Armstrong Auditorium, which is a performing arts center there. Uh, and so uh, a lot of times we're asking the question, how can a, a performing arts center that's in North Edmond get more involved in the greater Oklahoma City community? Well, the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program is one of those ways that we've found that's been very valuable for us. So I'm going to take you through all of that, give you some practical tips I hope that you can take home with you and think about. You all are a bright bunch of people, very talented, very creative people here. So uh, I'm sure that you can, hopefully what I give you today will just be uh, you know, a jumping off point for you to th be, think creatively about how your team, how your clients uh, can benefit from the program that we're going to be discussing. So, by way of introduction, what I'd like to do is, is take you on a little bit of a journey here. Uh, uh, last year, I had the opportunity to visit Istanbul. I spent about two weeks in Turkey and uh, had an opportunity to go through some of the great sites in Istanbul. Magnificent city here. Got to go on the Bosporus and cruise the Bosporus, one of my uh, bucket list items. Uh, several items actually checked off on this trip. And one of the things that I did was I visited the Istanbul Archaeology Museum. Now this museum is one of the greatest antiquities museums in the world, and I had never even heard of it until I started researching about this trip. Everybody's heard of the Louvre, everyone's heard of the British Museum, uh, some of the greater museums, Berlin and so forth, but here we have one that's really, really got some amazing things in it. And I learned some lessons here at this museum that I think uh, are uh, lessons that we can, we can take note from, uh, and I certainly took note from, and so I want to share some of that with you by way of introduction here today. So, uh, here you can see in the museum uh, some of the amazing antiquities that are here. These are uh, the gates of Babylon. You may have heard of the Ishtar Gate before uh, in ancient Babylon. They're located here. Parts of them are anyhow. Other museums have other parts of them. But what really interested me was a small room of cuneiform tablets. These are written in the ancient Sumerian language, and they're all about the size, uh, you know, a small rectangular size that will fit in the palm of your hand. Most of these date anywhere from uh, you know, uh, we're talking about 1700 B.C. back to a little over 2000 B.C. or B.C.E. So you're talking about 3,700 to 4,000 year old tablets. And as I began looking at the tablets and studying them, something really amazing began to occur to me uh, as I was, I was looking at them. I'll, I'll just share a few of them here with you. This one is a legal document about the purchase of a house. 4,000 year old document. Here we are buying a house. Anybody bought a house recently or had to do the, uh, all the paperwork and sign and sign and sign until your arm falls off? Yeah? Two clay tablets and we're done. It's yours. <laughs> so amazing. Here's another one. This is the letter from a, a, man, a young man to his mother. Dear mom, here I am on the battlefront, you know, and so forth. But uh, it's interesting. Here we've got people writing letters home to mom on cuneiform tablets, no less. That's uh, pretty interesting to me. Here's another one. It's called the oldest love poem. If you, uh, if you Google the oldest love poem and you look at the, at the Sumerian language, uh, I'll just give you a little bit of the, uh, of the text. It says, Bridegroom, dear to my heart, goodly is your beauty, honey sweet. Lion, dear to my heart, goodly is your beauty, honey sweet. 
Oh, it's a beautiful love poem. She's writing to her beloved. They're going to get married. There's all this exciting stuff going on. It gets a little bit more interesting if you read more of the poem. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, 4,000 years ago, here we have someone writing a love letter to their, to their beloved. Uh, and then this one uh, here is absolutely my favorite. This is called Inama Prefers the Farmer. You realize what this is? Dear Nani, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> She's breaking up with her intended and she prefers the farmer. So uh, 4,000 years ago, we still have unrequited love, right? 4,000 years later. This one was just released by the uh, British Museum and uh, just a couple of months ago. A 4,000 year old ancient Babylonian tablet, <laughs> the oldest customer service complaint ever discovered. All right, here's the text, it's hilarious. It says, tell Ianasser, Nani sends the following message. When you came, you said to me as follows, I will give you fine quality copper ingots. You left then, but you did not do what you had promised me. You put ingots which were not good before my messenger sits seen, and you said, if you want to take them, take them. If you don't want to take them, go away. <laughs> <laughs> what do you take me for that you treat somebody like me with such contempt? Yeah. So uh, pretty interesting here that uh, 4,000 years ago, what do we find? We find people falling in love, breaking up, buying property, writing letters home to mom, having difficulty with customer service and <laughs> quality control and all of those things. And so something began to dawn on me as I was looking at all of these ancient cuneiform documents. And that simply, to me, is what I would call one of these super vital truisms that we as human beings, especially today, and as marketers need to keep in mind. And that is simply this, and this is according to Shane Granger, see if you agree, okay? <laughs> human nature has not changed. We are the same today as we were 4,000 years ago. It's the same people, it's the same loves, it's the same hopes, it's the same dreams, it's the same needs. Humans haven't changed. What has changed, however, is technology. And yet I'll submit to you that maybe even technology hasn't changed all that much. You may say, well, what do you mean? Well, for example, a cuneiform tablet the size of a rectangle that fits in the palm of your hand, and when you want to write on it, you take a stencil and you poke on it like this, and when the person gets it, they read it like this, right? Have we really gone that far? Yeah? Of course we have. The technology, of course, is amazing today compared to what it was. But my point is, is that I just have felt so connected to all of these ancient people that realize, well, they're just like me, right? And so there are some of these sort of truisms that tend to exist. And as marketers, I think it's important for us, it's important for me to keep this in mind. And I try to drill this into my staff all the time. And that is that we can get caught up in technology and we can forget the most fundamental truth of our profession. And this is according to me, so see if you agree. To me, the most fundamental truth of our profession as marketers is simply this. We are in the people business. We're in the business of people. We're in the business of making connections with people. We're in the business of engaging with people, helping people, and as marketers, obviously helping people fulfill needs that they have. In some cases, helping them understand that there is a need that they need to have filled. But it, we really are in the people business. And so if we're in the people business, then that means that we need to be connected to people. We hear a lot about today uh, about how we get lost in technology, that people don't actually have conversations anymore. How many people break up with their boyfriend or girlfriend with a text? We've heard of that, right? I have, I'm not raising my hand saying I have. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, right? We've heard that, right? So, it, if, 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 we really ha if we really think about it, we have to be careful that we don't get distracted by all of the newest and latest technologies and the bells and whistles and forget the fundamental truth that we're in the people business. And that means that if we're in the people business, we have to engage with people. We have to be dealing with people. And we have to be careful that we don't get closed up in our glass towers, right, and forget that we need to get out and mix and mingle and talk to and learn about people. That helps keep us grounded in this profession, I believe. So if you agree, great. If you don't, let's talk about it later. Maybe it'll be an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do next then is give you some perspective on the tourism business. We're gonna have to bring this now into tourism. Tourism is about people. 
Tourism is about people coming to your city, Oklahoma City, greater Oklahoma City, and having a wonderful time, having a terrible time, whatever the case may be. How big is tourism? Well, let's talk about that for a minute. The Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department did a major research study, and in 2015 they released their findings. And here's what they discovered. That Oklahoma, that the tourism is Oklahoma's third largest industry. It's number three. Let that sink in a minute. Tourism is the number three industry in the state. Well, and it accounts for $8.9 billion in total direct travel spending for the state, a $9 billion industry in 2014, and that was up 20% over 2010. So it's a growing industry as well, okay? A couple more stats here from the research study. Uh, the annual, annual visitor volume to Oklahoma is, was 21 million in 2014, again, on the increase there. So 21 million visitors, and here's where my marketing ears really perked up, okay? In the first half of 2015, they spent a little over $2 million in advertising directly related to tourism, and what all that stuff there says is simply this. Their ROI was seven to one. In other words, for every $1 they invested in tourism marketing, there is a $7 proven return to the state and local economy. How many of us would like to have a seven to one return on our, right, on our campaigns? Absolutely. So this is a huge industry in Oklahoma. It is a thriving industry. It is a growing industry. And for people who get involved in marketing in that industry, there is a proven return to the state and local economies. Okay? So that should get our attention and help us realize, hey, there's an opportunity here for us perhaps to figure out a way to do this. I'm going to show you one way that you can get involved in the tourism industry and I'm going to try to help you understand how that will help you, especially those of you who are digital marketers and so forth, uh, how that can help. So what we know about visitors is that they do share their experiences. Right? How many of us have left reviews on one of these sites? Um, I, was, uh, I, I used Open Table when I'm on vacation because I'm in a, a you know, place I'm not familiar with and, and almost every time you know, the reviews are great at a restaurant. I go there and I like it. And there was one time I went and it was, it was really not good at all. And I thought, who are the people who've been reviewing this place? You know, I was disappointed one time. But the point is, people will talk, right? They'll, t they'll tell you whether they like it or whether they didn't. So what we know about tourism is that a quality experience is really just paramount. It's paramount to the total number of visitors we're going to receive, to the amount they're going to spend while they're here, and whether or not they want to come back. Yeah, it's really important that we get that right. So, destinations often spend millions of dollars, millions of dollars doing what? Marketing, right, to travelers, business travelers, leisure travelers, you, 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 you know, fill in the blank there, and they spend millions of dollars branding their destination's unique attributes. Okay. But unfortunately, what, what very little is done, however, to enhance the visitor experience once they're there, once they arrive. Very little is done to make like this emotional connection to the visitor. And so what, what we have to begin to think about is, well, what are we doing to align the entire community, everybody that's involved in tourism, right, to make sure that we are delivering as a product, as a community, that we are delivering the total visitor experience. So I want to talk a little bit about what that means and how the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program can help us with that. Savvy destinations are focusing on the visitor experience. That's a key term. We keep hearing that all the time. My staple gun friends here know what I'm talking about, right? We've aligned our whole branding campaign around the Armstrong experience, quite frankly. So, right? I'm preaching to the choir when it comes to that. But Oklahoma City is also getting very savvy about this, and we are now participating in a program called the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program. So let's talk a little bit about what the CTA program is and how you can get involved and how it can probably help you with um, your marketing. The program objective for the CTA program, this is kind of a textbook definition here, it's to increase regional tourism by inspiring, notice the word inspire, inspiring frontline hospitality employees and volunteers to turn every visitor encounter into a positive experience. Now, let me focus on a couple of words here. 
right? I've already mentioned inspiring, but notice this is talking about both employees and volunteers. You don't have to be directly involved in tourism or have a client directly involved in tourism for this to apply to you. You can be a part of this as a volunteer and reap the benefits just like anybody else who's involved in tourism, okay? Also, I want you to notice the word encounter, right? What do you think of when you think of the word encounter? Any, anybody want to offer a suggestion? What is an encounter? A one-on-one interaction. A one-on-one interaction with what? A person. With a person. Thank you, Terry. Yes, with a person, right? Do we encounter uh, the Bricktown Ballpark? Do, do we encounter the Riversport Rapids? Do we encounter a restaurant? Do we encounter a brand? Or do we have encounters with people? You see where I'm going with this? Okay. So let's talk about the focus on people. And of course, we want to turn all of that into a positive experience. So what the CTA program does is it seeks to bring all the stakeholders together in the community to focus on the total visitor experience. So we're talking about on the left hand side here, what we're looking at are destinations, right? Hotels, restaurants, airport, facilities, transportation, that's your Uber drivers, that's your taxi drivers, everybody on the tourism side of things on the left hand side, okay? But on the right hand side, we're talking about government. We're talking about industry. We're talking about the police, the hospitals, realtors, workforce and economic development, chambers of commerce, and yes, even everyday common citizens. Folks, this is the entire community we're talking about getting involved and wrapping their arms around the visitor and saying, we want you to have an awesome experience when you come to Oklahoma City. Yeah, that's what the CTA program vision is all about. So we're talking about hotels and restaurant people, police and firemen, airport transportation folks, attractions and visitor centers, college games, right? All of these things pulling together to give a total visitor experience and make sure that those encounters, right, are really special, that there's something happening there. And so uh, you can see here advertising even talking about looking for the CTA pin. And I'm ashamed to say I forgot to wear my pin of all days to forget to wear my CTA pin. I forgot today. So apologies for that. Okay. So, uh, so nationwide, we have right now about 11,000 CTAs certified. In Oklahoma City, we have just under 300 right now. So the program's growing. Yeah, we're getting lots of folks in. And I think, uh, Christy, you said you just trained another, how many was it since January? 73 since January, so we're on the move, we're on the march uh, with the program. So what is the CTA program? Uh, how, how does it work? How do you become involved with it? Okay, so I'll give you three simple steps. It's really quite simple. Number one, you gotta have 49 bucks. Okay, that's the entry fee. Number two, for that 49 bucks, you're gonna get a manual, it's pretty thick, and you're gonna get an opportunity to study that manual, all right? And then at an appointed time, you're going to come to a half day training session with a facilitator and you're going to go through all the exercises using the knowledge that you learned from the manual to be able to plan an itinerary for visitors to Oklahoma City. You're going to get an itinerary that says, here's a couple, right, retired couple, they have two days in Oklahoma City, plan an itinerary for them. They're interested in educational things and arts. Here's another family. Family of four, parents and two kids, ages 12 and 10. They have three days in Oklahoma City. They're interested in educational and uh, fun things for the kids to do. Plan an itinerary for them. You see what I mean, right? In other words, the point is, is that when you have that visitor encounter with somebody, right, that person comes and says, what is there to do in Oklahoma City? What is there for us to do? We've got a few days. You need to be able to give an answer. Right? You need to be able to say, well, what are you interested in? Let's refine this a little bit for you. <coughs> and then be able to suggest amazing attractions, hotels, restaurants, whatever the case may be, that, where they can go and participate and enjoy Oklahoma City. Can you imagine, we, we listed hospitals there just a moment ago. Can you imagine a CTA working in a hospital? Why would you need a CTA in a hospital? because somebody somewhere along the way is gonna break an arm or a leg and they're gonna to go to the emergency room and they're going to have to get patched up. Now their plans have changed. They're not gonna be rock wall climbing after they broke their leg, yeah? So what is the CTA able to do? Oh, you're in a, a diminished capacity? Let me uh, tell you what else there is to do, right? 
You love softball, but you can't play this week? Well, let me tell you about this place called the Oklahoma Softball Hall of Fame. And by the way, did you know that this week there's also the World Series of the Women's Collegiate Softball going on, right? Why don't you go and enjoy that? And uh, maybe you'll forget about your broken leg for a little while, right? Would you not, as a parent or as a, as a participant, would you not like be blown away by that? I'm in a hospital and this person's helping me figure out what I'm gonna do now that I broke my leg, yeah? That's the intent behind it. It's a service-mindedness that we all want to take on. That's the whole idea. So when we talk about, once you do those three things, then the curriculum then that you're going to study, the power, uh, model, module one is power and travel of tourism, uh, which we've been talking quite a bit about already. Module two is about discovering the region. What is there to do, right, and so forth. Module three, knowing, finding, and using resources. If you don't know the answer, where do you go to find the answer? Where can, you, where can you send people? What apps are available? What websites are available? What resources are available for people to understand what there is to do to have a great time in Oklahoma City? And then finally, module four is about exceeding customer expectations. How do we then, it's, it's excellent training, how do we anticipate the needs of our guests? How do we think ahead? You know what? They're going to need this. I'm going to go ahead and get it ready for them and exceed their expectation. They weren't expecting me to already have done that. Why? Because there's care and thought and concern. You guys know what it's like when you receive an unexpected gift, right? Or you have a date where somebody's planned something that's really amazing and they put a lot of thought and effort into it and they research the wine and they research the pairing with the food and all of that and you're like, wow, you put a lot of time and effort into this. Thank you, right? It's the same philosophy to the tourists who are coming here to Oklahoma City. So. What then are the benefits to us as marketers? Because I know you're all thinking, okay, I'm not in tourism. Uh, you know, I got to study what, what's up with that, you know, and so forth. So here are my, my view of how the Armstrong brand has benefited. So what I'm giving you here is a case study. Um, I'm sure there's many more benefits that we could come up with, but I just wanted to leave you with four this morning. See if you agree and see if hopefully this is a jumping off point for you to be inspired to figure out how this will work for you, okay? First of all, it is a rich, rich source for content. So all of you content team people, <laughs> pay attention because there's amazing content available here through the CTA program and the experiences that you get to do. I'll give you some examples. There are really great historical facts about Oklahoma that you will learn. We've got people here from the Chisholm Trail and, and, and other things. There's all kinds of history that you can hit your wagon to, if you will, right, uh, in your marketing and find ways to boost your marketing in that way. Uh, in addition, we're going to get to know the tourism districts. We'll do an exercise here in just a moment about that. Uh, you're going to get to actually go and visit these attractions. I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. Um, and then also updates on MAPS projects. We all know MAPS 3 is in, in full force now. What's going on? What's coming next? All of that intelligence is given to you as a CTA as well on a regular basis. Okay? So these are just some, some things that I uh, think as far as content uh, are concerned can really help you. And let me give you some examples here. So what I'd like to do very quickly, if you have a, a cell phone or a mobile device, whip it out. And if you want to do either Twitter or Instagram, Okay, Twitter or Instagram, use the hashtag CTAOKC, and I want you to just do a quick post, and I want you to list the three top tourism districts that you are familiar with in Oklahoma City. Just three. Just three. I'll give you the first one, okay, because I know what the first one all of you are going to think about, Bricktown. Bricktown's a tourism district, okay? So think of things like Bricktown, right? Put that up real quick. I'm going to switch over here to my uh, wall of tweets. And let's see here, if I hit five, it should start pulling in your, hopefully the technology works. <laughs> Hello. Here it comes. There's the first one. It might take a minute to register those. So hashtag CTAOKC and then whatever three top tourism districts you can think of and post, either Instagram or Twitter. It should start coming up here in just a moment. By the way, the guy that does this for us is in Croatia. We use this at our, um, at our auditorium concerts for that. So as soon as you hit the tweet or the Instagram, it should pick it up. So while we're waiting, I'll give you guys just another second.
Anybody posted yet? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me hit F5 one more time. We'll see if we get it. <coughs> it's usually pretty quick, so. If it doesn't work, we'll move on. Maybe the one part of my presentation that completely falls apart. That always has to happen, right? <laughs> All right, we'll come back and check this in a minute. We'll keep going here. I'll give it a chance to think about it. So, how many tourism districts did you name? Well, let's just, just name them out loud here real quick. Anybody? Adventure District. Adventure District. Plaza. 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 Downtown. Downtown, okay. Like the Arts District? In downtown? In downtown, okay. Paseo. Western Avenue, Film Row, Film Row. Auto, Alley. Auto Alley, good. Okay, so that's about what, six or seven? Okay, huh? There's more. There's more, okay. How many CTAs are in here? <coughs> Hopefully you got, okay, good. So you guys didn't participate, obviously, because you know them all. Uh, let's count them up. Adventure District, Asian District, Automobile Alley, we got that one. Boathouse District, right, new one there. Bricktown, as I already said, Deep Deuce, right? Film Row, we got that one. Midtown, I don't think we heard that one, but the Paseo Arts District, somebody said Paseo. Plaza District, you guys know where that is? Stockyard City, it's an actually tourism district here in Oklahoma City. Uptown 23rd, that's a new one, it's coming in. Western Avenue, there are 13 tourism districts in Oklahoma City, the greater Oklahoma City Metro, 13, yeah. So, as a CTA, it is your responsibility to learn these, but guess what? It's also your great fun and joy to go visit every one of them as a guest of the businesses and the facilities that are there. I'll show you what I mean, okay? So, when you talk about the Adventure District, we're talking about, here we are, so I'm going to show you a lot of uh, posts that we've done here recently, both through the CTA program and, and some of our employees on places that the CTA have, have been able to do, have been able to visit. Once a month, we have a CTA networking event, and we go to one of these districts, and we are hosted by the businesses, the restaurants, the attractions that are there. They welcome us in, they tell us all about what's going on, what's great, they wine us, they dine us. Yes, there's alcohol involved, by the way, people. Uh, and you get to really enjoy them. So here we are at the Adventure District. Uh, we visited the uh, Firefighters Museum here, Softball Hall of Fame. There are eight other photos here as well. Uh, we visited the Science Museum, the Oklahoma City Zoo, and the racetrack. Right? Guess how much we paid for all of that? Zero. Nothing. It was all picked up by CTA program from the city. Okay? Convention and Visitors Bureau. Or is it City of Oklahoma? No, it's Convention. Convention and Visitors. CVB. Great. Okay. Uh, here's another one. We were down at the Oklahoma Land Run Monument. Uh, on this day, we visited the Land Run Monument. They put us on a bus. They took us around all over Oklahoma City. We stopped in each one of the districts just as a way of introduction. This is the district. Here are the boundaries. Here's what's located here. And in a few places, we got out and got to go and enjoy uh, what was there. Okay. So number one, uh, I think in terms of benefits to marketers is Content. There's a lot of resources for content here, and you're creative, smart people. You can figure out how to make that work, right? I'm just saying, wow, what an exposure that you get. 13 different tourism districts, $8.9 billion industry. There's got to be something there for you to latch your wagon onto. I keep using that. I don't know where that came from today, but I like it, right? Hit your wagon to it and run, okay? Uh, and enjoy the benefits. Here we are at the National Weather Center launching a weather balloon, right? I don't know how many people are involved with science businesses, clients who are, who are tech, right? Can you think of a way to find a way to tap into that visit as well and learn what's going on there? Uh, we found benefit in all of that for us. <coughs> Second thing I'm going to give you is scoop out new attractions. Scoop out new attractions. How many of you have heard of Rapid, uh, the Riversport OKC? Rapids, right? Okay. The CTAs were hosted at the Riversport OKC. We were some of the first people to go on the rapids before it opened to the public and before even the Olympic trials were held. 
We went down there, they took us on a great tour of the whole facility inside and out, taught us all about the rapids, what's going on, the uh, meeting space that's available there, their plans for concerts, their plans for outdoor activities. You can go there and camp overnight with your family and spend the night there. You can go out in inner tubes and watch movies that are projected on the big screen. There's all kinds of plans that they have for the river sport. We were the first people, some of the very first people to go through. And they took us for two hours on the rafts. Okay. Now, besides being a lot of fun, let me just ask you this. What in the world would a, would a team from a performing arts center want to do this for? Any ideas? And st staple gun people don't answer. <laughs> I'm serious. Anybody have an idea? Why would I want my team involved in this? So we're, could, we're in the performing arts. So you could tell people what else there is to do in the community. Okay, and what does that do for me if I tell people what else is great in the community through my channels that I have? I'm a resource, right? I'm a resource for what, what things are great to do. In other words, we see ourselves as part of a whole, as a, as, a, as a bigger picture, right? I'm not standing here saying, I'm the greatest. Nothing against Muhammad Ali, but, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not standing here saying, look, my, my, my brand is the greatest. You should love my brand. Come see my brand. Let's love my brand. I'm saying my brand is a great brand, but so is Oklahoma City a great brand. Let's all <laughs> join hands, right? Let's be members of the, of the community and really make that happen. All right, uh, here's another scoop that we got. Uh, this one actually was us, uh, for, um, as a matter of fact. So, so we had a CTA networking social. We had the Russian National Ballet Theater from Moscow come, and they did Swan Lake. We hosted 50 CTAs, gave them a tour of our facility, and gave them tickets to enjoy the performance. And now we have 50 ambassadors out there talking about how awesome their experience was. Yeah? And again, it cost them nothing. Right. As a as a venue, as an attraction, we want the CTAs to come. We don't charge them anything for that, right? Just spend the gas to get here. We'll take care of you once you're here. And in fact, all of the attractions, all of the hotels, all of the facilities have the same attitude on the program. So it's a wonderful way for you to get to know what's going on and get the scoop on things. Here we were, this is a networking event we had back 2nd of March. The Oklahoma National Memorial and Museum underwent a $25 million renovation, right? Phenomenal new renovation in the museum. CTAs were invited to come down and get a sneak peek. Before it was open to the public, we were given the opportunity to go down, go through the museum, find out all the things that are new and neat and great about it. Okay. So as in terms of business intelligence, right? in terms of tapping into the tourism market, do you guys think it might be helpful to know what's coming up right, in the future? We also get updates on the MAPS projects. We come down here and they they tell us all about what's happening with maps, what the next thing is going to happen this month and the next month and the next month. And it gives us the opportunity, right, to get involved in what's happening and think of ways that we can creatively work to, you know, expand our brand, but also how to help other people expand their brands as well. And everybody get involved in that. I, I hope you're getting the vision. I, 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 to me, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer, but sometimes it's hard to convince people that this is a program that can really work. Um, the other thing I would mention, number three, opportunities for co-branding. As marketers, you, I think we all know the power of co-branding, right? So if I say to you, how many people in here are pie junkies? Anybody a pie junkie? A few, okay? All right. Do you get, what kind of warm fuzzies do you get when you think about pie junkie? If you're a pie person, you get big, big time fuzzies, I'm sure, because warm fuzzies, because Pie Junkie is an amazing brand, right? We discovered the Pie Junkie brand through the tourism industry and our association with it. Plaza District, what's that? Let's go, let's go visit, let's go find out. Oh, there's all these cool things over here. Pie Junkie, what's that? Let's go in and have some pie. Wow, that's the most amazing pie I've ever had, right? Let's check them out. Oh, look, their social media is huge. Guess what? We need a new vendor for our concerts, right? So let's serve Pie Junkie Pie at our concerts. Pie Junkie, are you interested? You bet, right? Now we're co-branding. There's just one example. I wouldn't have known about it had I not been a participant in this program. So that kind of intelligence comes to you, that, those kinds of opportunities. And again, when you go as a CTA, as a host of the city, right, to be there, they are standing there with their arms wide open, saying, hey, let's get to know each other. Let's co-brand, let's do business together, and so forth. Here we are at the Skirvin Hilton, and I didn't know this, but the Skirvin Hilton has an artist in residence, and it changes over time. Some of you may know that already. I didn't know that. I learned that through the CTA program. 
But the lady who's there right now is not just an artist. She's a really cool artist. You know why? Because she does art with beeswax. She doesn't paint. She paints with wax. And so you use a hot plate. And we actually got to try this. Here we are actually doing it. You take a hot plate and you put colored beeswax on there and you do all this cool stuff and then you put wax paper on and you transfer it and then it dries and then you have these beautiful pieces of art. And the stuff she has in her shop are absolutely amazing. Okay? I have, and, and I have to tell you, it's a fascinating process. Can you think of ways that brands could, could latch on to working together with the Skirvin, a very respected brand in the <laughs> tourism industry here and what's going on there? and find a way to use maybe some of that art or work with the artist in residence, maybe have her come and do something at your place, right? And be able to tag along with that, that good, uh, those good vibes that are already there with a brand like that. Again, the CTA program gave us access uh, to something like that. So I think opportunities for co-branding are there galore. Now, uh, here's one more. Uh, Vast at the Devon Tower, invited all the CTAs up, uh, wined us and dined us. We had a beautiful meal. We had an open bar, uh, and we had a gorgeous view. We got to watch the sunset, and all they, all they did was they just stood there and said, hi, guys, come on in and have a good time. No hard sales pitch, nothing, right? But their whole team was there, and as we got to talking, we learned, oh, you're interested in co-branding too. You're interested in working together with others. You're interested in finding ways that we can all work together. Right? And now they have, however many were at this event, I can't remember, about 30, 40 maybe, that came to that event. Now they're, all those people are out saying, wow, what a great place Bast is. You should go if you haven't been yet. Right? Again, that person marking. Again, we are in the people business, and you cannot get to know people. You cannot make connections with people. You cannot sell or be sold to if you are not having face-to-face -face contact with people. You can't do that sitting up in your glass tower, looking down over the city, deep in your computer, you know, with analytics and measurements and all of that. And that has to be done. I'm not poo-pooing that at all, right? But you've got to get out, right? And you've got to get, get involved with what's going on. This is an opportunity for you to do that. And again, it costs you nothing. It costs you nothing. Once you, once you get that entry fee and get your pen, it's all free of charge. One, one night a month. Wonderful opportunities. Okay, last but not least, I'll talk about gaining perspective on your positioning. This was important for Armstrong because we are a new brand in Oklahoma City, okay? And I think that it's very easy for new brands to either suffer from one of two, uh, two ailments, and they're sort of two sides of the same coin. On the one side is visions of grandeur. We are so awesome. <laughs> and our brand is so amazing, and so we're just going to go tell everybody how amazing our brand is. On the other side of the coin could be maybe a little bit of a lack of self-confidence, right? Right? Are we, where do we fit? Where are we? What, how, do we how do we connect? How do we make this work? What's going on? Okay? This program, the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program, allows you, because you get to get out in the community and see everything that's going on in all of these other tourism districts with all these other businesses and people, it gives you a sense of what your place is in the community. Not just your place, but if you have clients, their, their position. Right? That kind of information is powerful. So let me show you what happened when we got out of the office in North Edmond, came down and started getting involved in the program. We met some people from a little place called TripAdvisor.com. And the TripAdvisor people said, oh, you guys are Armstrong Auditorium. And we said, yeah, nice to meet you. And they said, uh, yeah, we've heard of you guys. You have? Yeah, we get a lot of traffic. What do you mean? Well, people are, you know, looking at you and talking about you. And we said, where? And they said, on TripAdvisor. That's, you know, the website. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay. I said, well, what, what do we need to know? And they said, look, we just want to give you some tips on how you can maximize on what we see as, a, as a, an opportunity for you. And we said, okay, great. Tell us what to do. They charged us nothing. It just took some time for us to make sure that we had all the, the metrics and the things in place. And look at this. Within one year, Armstrong Auditorium is now the number five top attraction in all of Oklahoma on TripAdvisor.com. That astounded me in less than a year. Now, we go back and forth between four and five because the Museum of Osteology has some great juice going on there as well. So, I mean, 
that's amazing. And look at this. Uh, Oklahoma City National Memorial, 2,400 reviews. <coughs> Phil Book Museum of Art, 694 reviews. Cowboy Hall of Fame, 1,000 reviews. Museum of Osteology, 794 reviews. Armstrong Auditorium, 150. You're telling me that with 150 reviews on TripAdvisor.com and the right metrics in place, we ended up on the number five spot in all of Oklahoma for things to do? And we're the number one spot in Edmond. Again, if I hadn't gotten out of the office and gotten involved in this program, this would not have been available to me. I'm not saying all of you are going to put your clients on the front page of TripAdvisor. That's not my point. My point is, is that you can't get that kind of, of, of uh, opportunity. You can't get that kind of sales going and so forth if you don't get out of your office and go mix with people. We're in the people business, right? And so that's why I, I preach to my staff all the time, get out of the office, get outside, find out what's going on. And these programs like the CTA program are a wonderful way to do that. And again, it costs you nothing, right? The first night alone, drinks at Vast. I mean, 49 bucks? Anybody been to Vast? <laughs> Anybody got out of Vast for less than $49? <laughs> So, I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful resource. Okay, so to recap, to wrap it all up, uh, the top line benefits, according to Shane Granger, see if you agree, are a great source of new content, uh, the ability to scoop out new attractions, get that business intelligence, get those juices flowing to figure out what, how you can tap into that, wonderful opportunities to co-brand, um, know where you stand, know where your brands stand, understand where they fit within this $8.9 billion tourism industry and all that's going on there. Uh, and then I, I think, again, what it really does show is that it gives you a competitive advantage, right? It tells people who come to your facility or who interact with your brand, and you, they see that CTA pin, and I'm ashamed I didn't wear mine. Uh, we care about the visitor experience. We want that visitor experience, that, in, that interaction, right, to be positive, and that takes people power. It takes face-to-face -face communications, okay? I'll finish with this. There's an ancient Hebrew proverb that says this, a man who has friends must show himself friendly. And I think that's a lesson that we as marketers need to take in and consider. And what I've submitted to you today is that I believe the CTA program is a way for you to show yourself friendly. Thank you very much. Thank you. fresh perspective. Thank you. I know in my world of social media marketing, you've really inspired me to find new ways to tap into my community and the districts here to help enrich my campaign. So thank you so much. Great. My pleasure. What questions do we have for Shane? Well, while you're thinking about questions, can I just introduce someone real quick? Sure. Christy, would you like to stand? Sure. This is Christy Smith, everybody. She is the director of the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program for the City of Oklahoma City. Uh, Oklahoma City. Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, so if you have any, any questions about how to join or you know, when the next training session is and all of that, uh, Christy can answer that. Do you know when, when the next one is actually scheduled? I might be putting you on the spot here. But. July 7th and August 9th. Okay, so we've got a couple coming up here really quick. It's a half day session after you study. So yeah, yeah. any other questions? I said a lot, so yeah. So anyone can do it and is there a charge? 49 bucks, that's it. That gets you through the door. And anyone is welcome. Yes. You do not have to be directly tied to tourism to participate. How long did it take you to learn all the information? Uh, I spent about 12 hours with the manual, honestly, reading. And I skimmed some sections, and I really studied hard some sections. It's an open book test, by the way. <laughs> so, so it's not like you have to, you know, it's, it's about knowing the resources and where to find them. But it's really, what I love about the program, guys, is that it's about applying the knowledge. It's not about just memorizing it. It's how do you apply it so that you can help people, right? Um, so it was about a 12-hour commitment for me. Some people probably could get through it in eight or four. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I, uh, I tend to like to take my time with things, so I absorb it a little bit better and get it comprehension. David? You guys have been amazing work establishing a brand in the What? Thank you. Worked what, what worked yeah. and what didn't? What worked? That's a good question. Um, I think what worked is we just kept at it. I mean, I, I, I hope that's not a disappointing answer, but we just decided we're just going to keep working at it. And I think, to be honest, why, why I gave this talk about getting out of your glass tower today is because I believe that's really what worked for us. We, had, we understood that we were on the fringe uh, uh, geographically of Oklahoma City. We're 30 minutes from downtown. 
Uh, we're not on I-35 where people can easily see us, so we're not a, oh, there's that thing, have you seen it? We're off the beaten path. So we had some, we, we did not have the advantage of location going for us. And so we had to be able to get out in the community um, and really start to meet people and get to know the community and find out what there is here. And the more we've done that, uh, the more of these opportunities have opened up to us. So, uh, I mean, yes, uh, and I, I have to say, we've had a, a wonderful help from agency, Staple Gun, a, a full disclosure, they are, we're, you know, they're on retainer for us, and we love Staple Gun, and I, there's wonderful agencies all over Oklahoma City and, and so forth, so all the agencies do great work. Um, this was a good fit for us. Um, but I, I think, honestly, David, just getting out of the office and making sure that we're in as many places as we can be. And we just saw this program as an amazing opportunity to do that. We see Lyft as an amazing opportunity to do that. You guys know that our staff has been here for coming for over a year. A lot of you know them. And unfortunately, Edwin is leaving us. Uh, I think you all know Edwin Trables. He's uh, headed back to the UK. He's been transferred there uh, within the same company, but uh, he's gonna be working out of our European office now. So I feel like my right arm's been cut off. <laughs> um, so we see Lyft as that, and then we also see like OKC Social. Um, I'm a member of PRSA. Uh, you know, just getting out of your office, and again, my, my point is just that it's people who sell. People sell. Uh, and it, you, gotta, you gotta be a people person and be friendly if you wanna have friends. And so that's, that's the uh, philosophy that we've used, and I think that's what's helped us the most, yeah? Yeah, good question. I do know this. I do know that the Adventure Road is moving uh, up, up I-35. So um, I learned that at a tourism conference as well. Um, they're gonna be taking Adventure Road, which is, Adventure Road is, um, it starts down there at the racetrack and the, the museum, science, excuse me, museum, the, the zoo, uh, Western, Cowboy Western Heritage Museum. It's gonna go right up I-35 to Guthrie. Uh, and so all of the attractions off I-35 right up that corridor are all going to be a part of that. And there's a lot of new stuff going in in Edmond that's going to be pretty amazing as well in terms of Adventure District. There's a huge sports complex that's going in up there, um, new conference center and hotel. And thankfully, because we're just a couple <coughs> miles off of I-35, that means Armstrong Auditorium is going to be looped into the Adventure Road. That's, that'll be part of what we're in. So that's what I know immediately in terms of what's expanding. Um, a 14th district. Yeah, I guess it's more about, you know, who's going to invest money next to, you know, re repurpose a, a location or something. But all of these are thriving, right? I mean, they're thriving. What a great time to live in Oklahoma City. We were just talking about that beforehand, right? Yeah. Hi. I've heard that the North Park area had applied to be a district. Is that not true? North Park? The shops at North Park? Oh, yeah. 122nd and so forth. That's, that's a good question. I, I have not heard anything about that, but it, it wouldn't surprise me because I think they're seeing the value of branding these districts and these destinations uh, and pulling everybody in. Yeah. And I'd like to say something else as well. Um, I don't, uh, how many of you are in the energy sector or have clients in the energy sector? Anybody here involved in energy? Okay. Uh, I thought there might be more, so I, I, I was going to mention that. But, um, you know, if you, think about, if you think about the CTA program and you think about what's available here, it's not just tourism. It's also energy and some of, the, and, um, some of these other foundations that are providing, Chickasaw Nation and so forth, that are providing, uh, think about Sonic, right? Um, they're providing these outdoor concerts down here, uh, downtown. Where are we? Where's Devin? It's over there, right? Right over here. Yeah, I'm going to get oriented. Um, you know, concerts in the park, Dead Center Film Festival, um, you know, the Sonic uh, movies and so forth and all of that, that's all part of this, you know, tapping into that tourism. So you don't have to necessarily be in the tourism industry or have a client in tourism, even if you're in energy or, or some of these others. Um, I can see a tie for that as well. So, yeah. Anybody else? Okay. So My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.